Hello and welcome to MMOFTW for June 7th, 2014. I'm your host, Bill Murphy, and this is the week that was in the top MMO news stories. Why exactly did CCP's World of Darkness cease production? What new features coming to Guild Wars 2 in Season 2 of The Living Story? Oh, and what new MMO launched into the stratosphere this week? Find out all this and more because this is MMO FTW. According to a new investigative piece at TheGuardian.com, CCP's mismanagement of the development of World of Darkness eventually brought about the game's demise. Development on World of Darkness after years in production ended this past spring to the dismay of many in the MMO gaming community. According to one former CCP employee, On many different occasions throughout the years I was there, CCP would often poach World of Darkness staff for expansion projects, recalls Nick Blood, a former developer and game master at the studio. There were plenty of developers who would get directed to create EVE content for three to six month cycles. During these times, World of Darkness development was significantly slowed down. I remember the upper management often exasperatedly trying to figure out what to do with the remaining staff for a six month period while their artists and programmers were busy elsewhere. And in also somewhat related news, CCP Games announced that 49 jobs have been lost in a restructuring move. According to several sources, the layoffs are part of CCP's continuing focus on the EVE universe, and the jobs loss came from the publishing areas of the company and will not affect any of the games currently in development. Though it is hard to say goodbye to our friends and family, this action concludes the process we started several months ago. CCP has provided severance packages and job placement assistance for those affected. Development teams in plans for EVE Online, EVE Valkyrie, Dust514, and Project Legion are not impacted by the restructuring said the CCP spokesman. And in hopefully some better news, ArenaNet has revealed an interesting new feature that will arrive with Guild Wars 2 Season 2 that is slated to start on July 1st. Players will be able to bank and save Living World updates to play at a later time, a feature similar to DVR replayability. Players logging in during the two-week span of a Living World update will be able to bank the content and play it again at any time they want, even after they've already experienced once, it'll always be there, all working alongside each player's own personal storyline. It's basically a continuation of the personal storyline, so from here on out, new Living World content will all be permanent, and you'll be able to go back and try it again over and over and over again if there's a favorite one. Uh, Season 2 will begin on July 1st, when the new journal function will go into effect as well. During Season 2, players will pick up on the dramatic ending of Season 1 with Lion's Arch in ruins. Carbine's Wildstar is arguably one of the most anticipated titles across gaming in 2014, and this week marked the official start of the game. All players that purchased a copy of Wildstar are now invited to come on into Nexus. Duh. Uh, you'll get 30 days of free game time, plus you'll be able to take a look at the cred options once cred is actually enabled on the servers. That's where you can buy in-game time, sell it in the game for gold, or buy some subscription time in the game for your heart and gold. Does that make sense? Not once to keep our fans waiting, we've already started our own review in progress. Check it out, it is my own writing, and it's just week one of several weeks of thoughts we have lined up as I work my way towards the end game to see if this theme park has legs that other recent ones don't. And Defiance is finally an SFW. No, it's not what you think. Tryon has announced that Defiance is now, now safe for wallet. That's an SFW. As its free-to-play iteration, went live starting this week. The free-to-play PC version comes with a host of interesting options for players to check out, plus a whole bunch of new content leading up to Season 2 of the television show on the Sci-Fi Network, and you'll also be able to start playing it for free on the PlayStation 3, I believe, later this month, or at least July, and the Xbox 360 version is also on the docket to turn free-to-play. We're just not sure when that's going to happen. You can watch the airwaves uh, of Twitch and check out a live stream that is on on demand from the Tryon Worlds channel that talks about all of the Season 2 stuff, the crossover content, and the new free-to-play version of Defiance. Followers of World of Warcraft and their, the web-based series Azeroth Choppers will be happy to hear that the winner of the competition between Horde and Alliance motorcycles has been selected. Now, I know this is a silly promotion. I'm not even sure why Blizzard did it, other than the fact it's just fun. But for this round, the motorcycle that wins the tournament is the Horde. 
It's awesome. Seriously. Even if you don't like World of Warcraft, even if you're not a fan of motorcycles, you should watch the most recent episode that announces the winner. Uh, you would be surprised just how cool this bike looks. It will be digitalized, the Horde Chopper, and will arrive in-game for players to actually mount with their characters later this year. We tend to speculate that both bikes will make it into the game eventually. I mean, the Alliance players are probably going to whine and moan until they get theirs anyway. Just kidding. For the Horde, congrats to the Chopper teams on some amazing designs. That does it for this week's top MMO news stories. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch at MMORPGcom without the dot. You can also find me on Twitter at the Bill Murphy. Thanks for watching. See you next week. And if you heard a cat, that's because we got a new one and she's very loud. As always, don't let a bad pug get you down. <laughs>